Welcome back to the Gifted Podcast. The Miami Dolphins make their biggest splash of free agency so far by signing Will Fuller on a one-year deal worth $10 million. Considering he has the capability of playing at an elite level, I think it's a steal and worth the risk. The Dolphins are one of those teams that are getting better, but are doing it very quietly. They went 10-6 and six last season in a complete rebuild year, so I expect them to get to that plateau again, if not better with the improvements they're making. A lot of credit has to go to the coaching staff for getting the most out of their roster, and Brian Flores leads that list of coaches. When looking at the receiver position, it's one of the best groups in the league now. Obviously not as good as the Bucs, but it has potential to be top 10. Devontae Parker is a legit number one receiver that balls out every week. It really doesn't matter who's throwing it to him, he produces. Preston Williams looked really good when he was on the field last season, and dare I say has number one caliber potential. Gusecki is a more than serviceable receiving tight end, that's not afraid to take a hit. So you pair Will Fuller with that, and they should be pretty potent. Fuller can do a lot from the receiver position and is a very good route runner, but with him taking the top off the defense, commanding double coverage, the rest of the receiving group should see more favorable matchups. Really, it's going to help the entire offense by taking pressure off of the offensive line and run game as well. I have to look at both sides of the story, though, and bring up the possibility of things not working out. Sure, Will Fuller could get suspended again or injured, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the quarterback position. They signed Jacoby Brissett as an insurance policy, but we already know what he's going to give you, which isn't much, as he struggles with decision-making and accuracy. But signing Brissett means they're committed to Tua for at least this year, and things really went downhill for him as the season went on. I'm not a Chan Gailey fan, and I'm glad he's gone because he shouldn't be employed in the NFL anymore. But Chan Gailey didn't force Tua to check the ball down every time. That was Tua crumbling in the pocket and mentally breaking down. Maybe he can turn it around, and I hope for Miami that he does put in the work this offseason. But I have to at least bring up the fact that the quarterback position could hold them back from reaching that 10-win playoff area. That aside, there's still some good players left in free agency, and we have the draft coming up too. So let's keep an eye on the Dolphins and see what their next move is going to be. On offense, at this point, they just need to add a little more help to the offensive line, and if Tua pans out, they'll have a dangerous offense. On defense, they could use another pass rusher to go with Emmanuel Agba, another linebacker, and strong safety. And that's my take on the Dolphins right now. They're getting closer to completing the puzzle and should be making some waves in 2021 if everything works out. With that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.